Look at him run! In order to tell this story, everything has to look as if we truly found a baby zebra that can talk. It's done by a team of people. We have acting from voice talent, acting from animals, and acting by animators and visual effects people all married into one performance. <laughs> Doesn't anybody have an alarm clock? I storyboarded the entire movie and made it work on paper. Then the editor cut all of that together with voice tracks, sound effects, and music. So we basically saw the movie on screen before it was ever shot. With that, we went to location to shoot our scenes with all the animals. And the animal trainers taught all these animals to perform all the things that were in the script. Okay, cut. And our editor goes through all the footage and cuts this all together. You get a tremendous amount of film because you want the animal to do something that corresponds with the storyboard. We spent a lot of time to find what piece of animal acting worked best with that dialogue. And it plays, it plays very well. It looks like the animals are addressing each other. Um, it looks like they have a personality. How about I throw you up this horse's butt? <laughs> I thought you were mad at me. Let's do it. How about I call you Mr. Push and Fart? How about that? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Academy. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while, but I'm glad I finally won. Ooh, the zebra's out! Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> Your little ego. Ooh, ooh. Oh no, they found me! Extra crispy! I think I can handle that. Very much like you. <laughs> the next step is to go back to the voice talent, who delivered the voices before we went to the shoot, but now they actually get to see the animals delivering their performance. And then he goes, oh, great. This you couldn't be idea. that depressed yeah. after Go you just had this it. high of winning the race. For me as an actor, just to give my voice, you know, and, and see it on a zebra, you know, it's just so weird and funny. Jeff Fox already noticed that the chicken was going crazy, so he started acting crazy. And Reggie was a little more wild-eyed and nervous than at first thought, and so when I went back to do him again, I, I, I probably changed it just a little bit. If I could do voiceovers only, I would. I prefer it, because it's much more fun. Hey, don't make me chew open a can of pony wool. Ever since I became an actor, I've, you know, many actors want to play Hamlet or Macbeth, or I just wanted to play a Shetland pony. Dustin Hoffman, he always surprises us. It's unique what he does. He lays down lines that I would never even have thought about that's how they were going to sound. You know, you get basically a Dustin Hoffman performance out of the pony. You have got more heart than all of them put together. At that point, you have the correct picture with all the personality and the voice that matches at this point. Now, those two parts are sent to the visual effects people. We begin by doing 3D scans of the actual animals, which is basically taking the geometry of the animal into the computer. And that model ultimately is the thing that you're going to attach to the animals because we have to put the mouth back on the animal. You might have a model that it, that's semi there, but when they start doing this, the animal does this, and moves his face in a funny way, you have to be able to conform your model to fit to that. Goose has got this big long bill, and the idea early on was to uh, make him talk mostly out of the side of his mouth. So all of our mouth shapes are designed to talk out of the either the left side or the right side of his mouth. When he says eight, you see that happens here. Let's just say I'm having a little disagreement with my family. There are specific shapes that are recognizable. When I make an L shape, my tongue comes forward and touches my front teeth. Well, in Goose, he's got a tongue in there. When you see him saying something like L, the shape in question is going to be 17, which we name Lily. Goose, when he says, are you some kind of ass? I want an ass. I want that big to really open up. So we made just a big open mouth shape. And then we can also mix them together. We want it to look natural. We want it to look like if these animals could talk, this is what they'd really look like talking. Then the original photography is projected back onto that wireframe so that it now looks like he's got his original mouth back. I don't understand. And then it would go into the next step, which is in the compositing. And it's in the compositing we do the eye movements. The eyes is what we look at when somebody speaks. We want to see that eye expression coming off of the animal's faces. What you do is you wrap a mesh around the original face. You've got to then distort it so that the expression is the expression that you want it to have. This is the typical gangster look that the goose has. It's just, it's just kind of a frown. So every time he says something, he's usually going to say it with, with his eyes frowned like that. 
but whenever he wants to emphasize on a certain word, that's when he raises his eyebrows. So doing the expressions is fun. That was the fun part. You know, I wanted to be angry. I wanted to be sad. I wanted to be a gangster. That was the fun part. I feel like I was the coach, and I was given the dream team. You didn't think we were going to let you have all the glory to yourself, did you? Between the animal trainers, the editor, the voice talent, and the visual effects people, it's such a team. When you see a shot, they present it to you with all the elements on it. You kind of go, oh, wow, yeah, look, he's, he's talking. Bada-bing! Bada-boom.